Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, decode string. All right, so in this question, we're given an encoded string and we want to decode it, okay? So the encoding rule is that we have K and then we have an encoded string inside of square brackets, where the encoded string inside the square brackets is being separated or repeated, sorry, exactly K times. So for example, uh, what that basically means is that K is going to be a number and the encoded string is just going to be some sort of string. So for example, let's say we have K open bracket. So inside of the square brackets, we have AB. So we would repeat AB for a total of K times. Uh, know that K is guaranteed to be a positive integer. You, you may assume that the input string is always going to be valid. We did not have any extra spaces, uh, square brackets, and everything is well formatted. Okay. Furthermore, you may assume that the original data does not contain any digits and that the digits are only for the repeat numbers. Okay, so what that means is that inside of the square brackets, we are never going to find digits. We're only going to find numbers inside or um, at K, okay? Uh, so for example, there won't be an input like 3A or 2, 4, okay? Pretty simple. So let's just look at one example and then we'll go on to the drawing pad to kind of uh, elaborate and see how we can solve it. So over here, we have 3A and then 2BC. So what that means is that Inside of this, we have A. So A is going to be repeated for a total of three times. So we have A, A, and A. And then after that, we have B, C being repeated for a total of two times. So B, C, and then B, C. Perfect. All right, so now we have another example over here. So we have three square brackets. And inside of the square brackets, we have A2 and the square bracket C. So it's kind of like a continuation, okay? So you might have this kind of um, square brackets inside of square brackets where it's a longer string. So in that, we can actually simplify it, okay? So how would you simplify it? So A2 and then C, A2, C, right? So what that means is we would first have A and then we would have two Cs. So you can kind of just imagine all of this being three square brackets, A, C, C, okay? So we're gonna simplify it down to that and that's exactly what we're going to end up with. So A, C, C, then A, C, C again, and A, C, C again, three A, C, Cs, okay? So, um, if you look at this question, everything is done methodically. And to be more precise, there is a very specific order in which the things are done. For example, you first, uh, inside of a square bracket, you would go to the innermost square bracket, which in this case would be the C's, and then you would get ACC. And then you would go to this square bracket over here and get that multiplied by three times, ACC, ACC, ACC. So it's kind of, it's pretty methodical and it goes step by step. So you can kind of think of using a stack where uh, you're storing all these values and each time they're getting modified. So let's see how we can actually use a stack in order to solve this question. Okay, so over here, um, we're gonna do the same question over here. Uh, three and then uh, A2 and then C, okay? Okay, so the idea over here is to use a stack, okay? So uh, how is our stack gonna start off? So we're gonna have a stack, I'll just represent it using a list. And inside of it, we're going to start off with an empty string, okay? And over here, this empty string, we're going to give two values inside of the list, and the other value is going to be the value 1. Well, technically, it could be anything, but just for the sake of understanding, I'm putting 1 over here, and we'll see its purpose really soon. So what exactly is happening over here? So this over here is going to represent the encoded string, okay? And this over here is going to represent the number of times that string is going to be repeated, okay? So we'll see how this actually comes into play real quickly. Okay, so one more thing we're gonna have is we're gonna have a variable called number, and number over here is going to be used to kind of uh, store or tell us how many times something is being repeated. So in this case, number is also going to be a string and we'll convert it to an integer when needed. All right, perfect. So let's see how we can do this. So we're gonna iterate through everything inside of string. So first, we're gonna go to three. So the first thing we're checking for is is three a number or not? So in this case, three is a number. So since three is a number, to our num, we're going to add three, okay? So when you add three, we're going to have three as it is. And since it's a string, uh, you don't actually do like your arithmetic addition, you're just adding it over there. So now you have three as the number. So now what happens, let's go to the next place. So now we have an open bracket. So when you have an open square bracket, that means that we have some sort of starting of a series, okay? So we have some sort of start to some certain series. So we want to account for that. So in order to do that, we're going to add this to our stack. So our stack over here, what we're going to add is we're going to add an empty string. And we don't know what goes inside of the string yet, but we are going to fill it up. 
Okay, so we don't know what goes over here yet. And finally, to this empty string over here, uh, what is the number going to be? So in this case, the number is going to be whatever is over here. So that is the number three. So we're going to have the number three right over there. All right, so we have that in our stack. And after that happens, the number is now gonna get reset it to an empty string, perfect. So now let's keep going on. And now we have the letter A. So what happens when we have a letter? So when we have a letter, we know that we're gonna add this letter to our stack. So we're gonna add it over here and where exactly we're we gonna add it. So we're gonna add it in the very last element in our stack, which is this, and we're gonna add it in the string, okay? So we're gonna add S right over there. So what exactly is this telling us so far? So it's, sorry, not S, what am I saying? Uh, a, right? Since the letter over here is A, sorry about that. Okay, so what that's basically telling us is that this A is going to get repeated for a total of three times, which so far actually does make sense and it's correct. But we still need to consider the two over here, right? So let's keep going on, the two Cs. So now we have two again. So since we have a number, we're gonna add that to num. Now we have an opening bracket. And whenever we have an opening bracket, we know that we have some sort of encoding that is going to be repeated, right? So we're gonna make a new element in our stack. So this element over here, let's just make it bigger. Uh, it's going to have an empty string, right? And it's going to have a number. In this case, the number is two. So we're gonna have the number two over here. Uh, sorry, it's kind of out of space. Okay, so now after two, this actually gets reset it. And perfect. So now we go on to the next uh, value, which is C. So uh, currently we're at C, which is a letter. So that means we need to add it to the very last element string. So in this case, we're gonna add C over here. Perfect. Now after this, we have a closing bracket. And we have a closing bracket, that means that we're currently at an end of one of the encodings. So in this case, we have two encodings. We have one over here and we have one over here, right? So which one is this uh, accounting for? So this accounts for the most recent encoding. And this is where using a stack makes sense. So this, the first square bracket means we're done with the most recent encoding. So basically what we're gonna do is we wanna consider that. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this out, okay? So let's just actually do that. So we're popping out C comma two, okay? So I'll just erase it to kind of represent it being popped out and let's rewrite it over here. So now we have C comma two, all right? So we pop this out and what exactly does this mean? So this means that uh, basically C over here, the letter C, is getting multiplied for a total of two times. We'll convert this to an integer, okay? So this is basically going to end up giving us the value CC, okay? So 2C gives us CC, and that is correct. 2C does give us CC. So now, how exactly do we account for this in our final solution? So to actually do that, what's going to happen, like I said earlier, this uh, over here is the same as writing three and ACC repeated for a total of three times. Right? It is exactly the same thing. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're simplifying it, right? So this CC, which we currently have, is now going to be appended to the last uh, value inside of our stack. So let's just rewrite this real quickly. Real quickly. So over here we had A, and to the A we're gonna add this value. So we're gonna add C and C. So that has been considered four, right? So we have A, C, C, and the number is gonna stay the same, which is three, okay? Uh, yeah, so perfect. So we have this and let's just get rid of this since it's taking up too much space. All right, perfect. So now we have this and now we're going to go on to the next value. So the next value over here is another square bracket. So this square bracket is representing the value three. Okay, so it's uh, representing that encoding and we need to decode that. So now what this is telling us, we're going to pop it out. So let's just cross this out and uh, let's just rewrite it. So we're going to have ACC repeated for a total of three times. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to multiply ACC three times. So what does that give us? So that gives us ACC, then ACC again, and ACC again, okay? Now, what exactly do we end up doing with this? So this is where this kind of dummy uh, stack node uh, comes into play. So this element over here is repeated for one time. Well, technically it could just be anything, but let's just leave it as one, okay? Okay, so to this string over here, uh, since this is popped out, this is the last value remaining. Uh, to this, we're going to add ACC, ACC, ACC. So now that is just going to be look like this, comma one. Uh, and this is just going to be repeated one time. And the one is just kind of there for a dummy value, okay? So now what we're going to end up outputting is going to be exactly this value over here, ACC, ACC, ACC. Okay, so hopefully you did understand how this works. And 
Uh, just to kind of add on to this, uh, let's say after the square uh, closing bracket over here, we had the value x, y, z, okay? So over here we have x, y, and z, and what happens to that? So now what's going to happen is all we're doing, since uh, they're just letters and there's no number before it, uh, in that case we, mean, we know that it's not going to get repeated. We're just going to add it to the string as it is. So what's going to happen, we go to x, and we're directly just going to add x to the string part of the last value. So we're just going to add x over here. Then we have y, and then we have z, okay? And this is going to be our output. All right, so now let's just see how we can code it. It shouldn't be too hard, and let's just see how we can do it. Okay, so let's start off by defining our stack over here, and let's just uh, define it as an empty list, okay? So in the very beginning, uh, we just saw that we had some sort of dummy value inside of our stack. So let's do that over here, and we're going to add that value. Uh, so it's going to be an empty string, and then we have the value 1, okay? So we have that in our stack in the very beginning. So after this, we also have the variable called number, and this is where we're storing the number each time. Okay, so now that we just uh, defined all of this, we can go inside of our for loop. We're, we're going to iterate through each of the characters, okay? So let's just do for character and s, and over here, we're going to check if whatever character we're on is a digit or not, okay? So to do that, I'll just make a list over here called nums, and this over here is just going to have all the numbers. So uh, just to add all the numbers, what we'll do is we'll just do for x, for x in range, and uh, it's going to be up to 10. So that's going to give us the numbers 0 through 9. And now what we want to do is we want to convert these numbers into a string. So let's just do string x, okay? So now we have all the numbers in string format inside of these nums. So to check whether something is a number or not, all we need to do is we can just do uh, if character, sorry, if character in nums, okay? So if it is inside of nums, we know that we have a number. So in this case, we're now going to go to this num string over here, so num, and to that, we're going to add whatever number we have. And to do that, we're just going to do num plus equals to character, okay? So that's one condition. Uh, another condition we have is what if we have an opening bracket, okay? So if our character over here is equal to an opening uh, square bracket. So double equal to, and we just want the opening part, okay? So in that case, we're gonna add something to our stack. So to do that, we're gonna do stack dot append, and what, and what is the value we're appending over here? So we're going to append a list uh, with the empty string in the beginning, and the second value over here is going to be a number. So what we're gonna do is let's just convert this uh, string over here to an integer, okay? Uh, so integer num, okay? We're converting this number over here. All right, and after we do that, one more thing we need to do is we want to convert our number back to an empty list. All right, perfect. So we have this, and I'm just going to copy this over, and another condition that we have is when we have an opening bracket, oh, sorry, closing square bracket. So if our character is equal to a closing square bracket, then in that case, what we're going to end up doing is that we need to pop out that value, okay? So to do that, we're just going to do stack dot pop, okay? So that is going to pop out the last value inside of our stack. Okay, so uh, when we pop it out, we're going to get a list consisting of two values. So let's just deconstruct and store each of those values inside of a variable. So the first value that we're going to get is going to be a string. So let's just call it string underscore. And the other value that we're going to get is going to be the number, right? So the k value, so k. And that over there is going to be equal to stack dot pop. All right, so we have both of those values, and now what we want to do is we're going to go to our stack, we're going to go to the last element in our stack, and then we're going to go to the string part of it. So to that part, we're going to add whatever the string is of the element that we popped out. So that is stored over here in string underscore. Okay, but this string over here is going to be repeated for a total of k times. So we need to account for that. So to do that, all we are going to do is we're going to multiply this by k times, okay? So we've added that and now we've kind of updated our stack, okay? And finally, one more thing we want to do is if this is not the case, uh, that means that we just have a letter. So in this case, uh, when we just have a letter, all we need to do is we're going to go to the very last stack or uh, element in our stack, go to the string part of it, and we're going to add whatever character this is, okay? Perfect. So that's all we need to do. And at the very ending, we're going to have uh, just one stack remaining. So to just get that, we're going to do stack negative one or zero, doesn't matter. 
and we're going to get the string part of it, which is going to be this over here, so zero. Okay, so uh, let's submit this, and it should get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.